Hi, everybody. Welcome to Buzzing About Romance, a quick shot of romance. On this episode of A Quick Shot of Romance, I am joined by podcast contributor Jenny, and we are reviewing By a Thread by Lucy Score. Welcome back to the podcast, Jenny. Hello. Thanks for having me. Okay. You want to go ahead and read the synopsis from Goodreads? Do that. Dominic was staring at me like he couldn't decide whether to chop me into pieces or pull my hair and French kiss me. Dominic, I got her fired. Okay, I had a bad day and took it out on a bystander in a pizza shop, but there's nothing innocent about Ali Morales. She proves that her first day of her new job in my office after being hired by my mother. So maybe her colorful, annoying, inexplicable, alluring personality brightens up the magazine's office that have felt like a prison for the past year. Maybe I like that she argues with me in front of editorial staff. And maybe my after-hour fantasies are haunted by those brown eyes and that sharp tongue. But that doesn't mean that I'm going to be the next Russo man to take advantage of his position. I might be a second-generation asshole, but I'm not my father. She's working herself to death at half a dozen dead-end jobs for some secret reason she doesn't feel like sharing with me, and I'm going to fix it all. Don't accuse me of caring. She's nothing more than a puzzle to be solved. If I can get her to quit, I can finally peel away those layers. Then I can go back to salvaging the family name and forgetting all about the dancing beer slinging brunette. Ah, hold my beer, grumpy, grump face. Okay, so this was released April 23rd, 2020, so it is a couple years old. The tropes are grumpy sunshine, boss, employee, age gap, and enemies to lovers. It is a standalone, um, and so there's no series to it. It is a dual first-person book, and it is the put-out percentage is 65%. So it's kind of a slow burn, but this book is really long, so I actually didn't qualify it as a slow burn. Because if it had been like a 290 page book, it would have been like a 30 percent. Yeah, because I was like reading and I was like, oh, my only had you read this before? I had like when it first came out, which Mm -hmm. 2020 was a whole nother animal. Like, yeah, it was a a reread for me and I was rereading it today and I was like, I don't remember it being this long. It's really good and it worked and I didn't hate it, but like trying to prep for the podcast, I was like, oh man, I shouldn't have waited till today. Right. <laughs> like I'm sitting in swim practice, like <laughs> scanning through. I'm yes. like, hmm. okay. So let's talk about their meeting because honestly, this is one of the best meet cutes in a book. Like I love a meet cute, but so Dominic is walking into a pizza shop on his cell phone and there's a sign at the restaurant that says no cell phones. And so he looks across the room and sees this gorgeous girl who apparently works there. And then she starts yelling at him for having been on the phone. Right. And then she seats him with his mom, which she thinks is his date. date. Um, and she's a little snarky about getting their order, but like, I mean, she works at a pizza place. Like, <laughs> well, but also too, he's kind of a dick from the get go, right? Like, he didn't, he wasn't going to get off his cell phone, so yeah, he deserved yeah. it. And so, like, his mom is really sweet to her. Basically, is like, stop being so mean. And so, like, she, <laughs> when she asks, like, if he wants some sweet and iced tea, like, I just laugh really hard. <laughs> But so they order their pizzas and he's being mean some more and he gets a pepperoni pizza and she proceeds to put the pepperoni in F you and serves it to him. And then he gets her fired. Yeah. Quite dramatically. Yeah. But she, yeah. but she leaves dramatically. Like, yeah. She I'm, well, I mean, at that, that point, firing. right. Like she yeah, didn't have she anything was, left to lose. There are no fucks to give. Right. But then yeah, she gave her last one. <laughs> she did. Well, cause she like, so Allie herself, she's kind of, she's kind of stuck. So she lived in Colorado, but we find out throughout the story that her dad has dementia and he is in a home and she's trying to take care of him, but he hasn't been taking care of the house that she grew up in because of his health. And she didn't know. And so she's dealing with the dementia diagnosis, which I think that Lucy score did a really good job showing like how devastating a dementia diagnosis is to the family. 
like not so much the patient but the family right I agree like she definitely showed both sides like the good and bad days and Mm -hmm. kind of the grief that goes along with losing somebody that's still living yeah well and that's the thing because like they're like there's multiple scenes where she goes and visits him and it is heartbreaking a couple of them are heartbreaking but there's this one scene where she goes he's having a great day because he was a musician and he was playing music and he knew who she was and he was really lucid for hours and like she went into work late because of it because she's like I don't get many of these. So she was taking full advantage of that. And it's just, it's so true. Like they're like, once those, once the mind starts to go in patients like that, like those lucid moments, like you grab them and hold on to them. Right. Right. But so Allie is working multiple jobs, trying to pay for her dad's care, pay for the house repairs and just live. Yeah. And her her mom is not like she left when she was like 11 11 yeah but she's yeah. like trotting the globe being a good person now you put that in right. like finger quotes but i don't yeah 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 telling everybody else how to live their life when mm-hmm. yeah yeah and she's like this do-gooder like building water wells and things like that and so Allie has some baggage but but she really tries to see the positives in life and I appreciate that like yes like life has shit on her recently but like she is not allowing it to to bring her down incessantly right when you said like grumpy sunshine like I was like like at first that isn't what I would have like like labeled it but um yeah she's more optimistic than I would have been in her situation (laughs) yeah well and I, th- I think that this is one of those books where she is like, she sees the positive, like she, she lives her life in a, sar- like in sarcasm for the most part. And I think that that's one of the reasons I, that I really think this book works well as a grumpy sunshine, because like Dominic's kind of an asshole when you meet him, Not but at the same time, he is. <laughs> he is, yes. But it's one of those, it's one of those grumpy sunshines where he truly is grumpy in the sense where like he's an asshole but but he see like you understand the the reasoning behind it and with the right motivation and the right change of thought like his it's not like he has a personality change he's still kind of like grumpy at the end of the book but like he's not an asshole at the end of the book and I think that is one thing that Lucy score does really well in this book like yeah, a lot of it is his situation circumstance and mm-hmm. he has to find a way to change what he can and deal with what he can't change. Well, and I think he also has to recognize like he's not his dad. Like he has a lot of like of these thought processes of like I have to live my life a certain way because these things have happened in the past and he sees himself in this position and in like in the shoes of his father and he has he has multiple people having to tell him like you're not your dad like your dad made really dumbass choices like he made those decisions like you are doing better and he needs to recognize that right and I think in a longer book like this we can see that like develop more in a natural Mm -hmm. way than like kind of like the overnight like oh epiphany yeah Um, well and that's the thing too like the book itself like it's it's like 500 pages or like 400 and something pages, but it's not a short timeline. Like it goes across like a good Mm -hmm. amount of time. And so you're not reading all these really intricate moments. Like you're, you're reading as life is, is going on. But so Allie ends up, so the day she gets fired, let's go back to that. (laughs) She have like Dominic's mom happens to to stop. I think she followed her, but I think so too. It seems like she stumbles across her and offers her a job. And then she also offered, there's this guy sitting at the bus stop, buddy. buddy. (laughs) So he's like, Oh, you're, you're handing out jobs. I'll take one of those too. And so she (laughs) gives him a job too. And like, buddy is one of those characters who is just, he is happy. Like he is down on his luck. His wife got hurt on like at a job but he truly like like there's this point where Allie says like buddy's friends with everybody like he meet 
his people and they're his friend and he has this innate like ability to make everybody happy around him except for Dominic right which I mean apparently no one can make Dominic happy but yeah like Buddy's the kind of person like everybody knows somebody like Buddy Mm -hmm. where they see the positive and everything like he even talks like his wife got hurt like they he lost his job because he was taking care of them but there's always a positive. Like he knew that like, that was not their end game, like being in the situation they were. And it just, it was really uplifting, like his character. And like, he's just one of these side characters, but you really fell in love with them. Right. Right. But that's, that's one thing with this book too, is there's, there's a decent sized cast of characters. We have Linus who is like the cre like the creative director, like of the magazine and like, takes care of all the shoots and he it has some devil wears prada vibes in this right. mo- in this book but it's like and they actually make a reference to it that dominic is miranda right well i was like and, i was a huge ugly betty fan so oh, like, i love ugly betty i was just i honestly was just re-watching that like last month yeah i i love it kind of is too. but dominic was, is more of a dick than daniel was yes i kind of like used the like setting as my yeah image yeah yeah it's true because amanda is kind of like that melina right and then like you have the mom and well and you have like the the, dad the fashionista bestie because the english chick i can't think of what her name was on the show but she's she's the linus like dressing dressing alley Oh yeah, so it's like Devil Wears Prada, Ugly Betty, like meshed together. Yes. So if you like those two things, you would really <laughs> you, like this book. Could, but honestly, yes. it's it's a really funny book. But eventually, like you get to a point where Dominic's baggage, like it it rears its ugly head, and he fucks up, and he fucks up bad. Yes, he does. Like, so I really wondered if he was like going to learn his lesson at all. Well, and you, it was one of those books where even so his best friend harry like he tells him like what happens and harry's wife is like i don't think you can come back from this right and it's like it's true like you're reading it and you truly wonder like is he gonna be able to grovel enough to to make this better right and yeah like i said like i wondered if he could like correct his wrong because Uh um yeah I would be pretty mad yes but it it takes a while too like like, which it should yeah it's not the quick like resolve yeah oh no it's not it's actually like I was I'm looking at it right now so it says as March gave way to April so he has been emailing her like for like every night there's a new email so he emails her at least once a day for over a month like and I, that's just at the beginning of like the chapter. So I'm not, I don't know how far into the chapter, like right. anything happens or if it's even that chapter, like. I want to like, I, I don't think we get a couple. dead set like timeline, but like, but it's, it's like six to eight weeks. Like it's a it's, long time. Yeah. There's, there is distinctive groveling, like a lot of groveling. Like he eats a lot of shit in <laughs> his emails, but that was one of the things too, is like emails were one of their ways of really communicating because Dominic, like part of the theme of this book is the fact that they work together. Like he works, like she works for him. And that was one of his dad's big faults. And so he doesn't want to want her. And he tells her these things and he like, he's constantly hurting her unintentionally. Right. He's trying to be a better person per se, but. But he's um, like, he keeps shoving his foot in his mouth. Yeah. he has good intentions for the way that he's doing stuff, but the way that he is doing it is terrible. And he like, he unintentionally hurts her over and over again at the beginning of the book. And then he gets this like crazy idea that they're going to learn about each other on personal time through <laughs> email. Right. And their personal email. Cause like there can't be any trace, <laughs> but that doesn't go super well either because no. then again, like he sticks his foot in his mouth and like, and and that's one thing I like about this book is like Allie, like she doesn't change a lot. Like she's pretty confident. Like she has some like self-worth like epiphanies. And it's like, I am worthy of like this right. and this. And so like, but she just, 
finally understands what like her friends and like her neighbors, like her dad's neighbors have been telling her, like you're worthy of these things. But Dominic, like he really shows a lot of growth in the fact that like he can have this relationship and it is not the same. Right. And they, they are older. Yeah. Like Like he 39 and like 40. Like, I think she's mid thirties and he turns 45 in this book. And I want to say she's like mid thirties. So I think there is a deep, like it is, I feel like there's a like 10 years I, there might actually it might not be an age gap i think yeah because i gap. think she's 39 okay so i might be wrong don't quote me on that <laughs> but it's one of those things where like they are older like they are more mature like they they've think experienced about more life yeah mm-hmm. and they well and they process things differently too right which i think i appreciate but this but it is it is a beefy book so you have, like if you're gonna read it like you are in for the long haul but it it comes together really well and I and it works and it it is funny and it is honestly there are some things that she said like at one point I think she says I'm a fucking delight and I'm like, <laughs> I have said that I'm pretty sure you have <laughs> so I'm like I, I really like Allie like we be friends. Yes, she, yes. She's she's a little snarky, but she's like snarky without being like truly mean. She no. yeah. Yeah, she's not well, and if she is mean, she's not she's you like probably nice. deserved it. Yeah. Well, she's like nice mean. <laughs> like when she's talking to that one person in like the admin pool, like she's nice, but she's mean. Right. And I kind of love her. But it's such a good book. Okay, if you think, or wait, do you have a book you think we should review for a quick shot of romance? If you do, send us an email at thebees at bookcaseandcoffee.com. Thank you, Jenny, for joining me on this quick shot of romance. Thanks for having me. And until next time, happy reading, everybody. Find us on Instagram at Buzzing About Romance or on Twitter at Buzzing Romance. If you like the podcast, please leave a review. If you'd like to support us directly, join the Bookcase and Coffee Patreon and receive exclusive content only available to Patreon members. Check out bookcaseandcoffee.com for our on-the-shelf show notes.